Allele specific oligo hybridization or dot plotting is a common tool in molecular biology research, forensics and genetic testing. It's a method for testing known mutations, specifically for single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs, so even a single nucleotide mutation can be detected with this technique. It can be used to determine whether someone has a particular disease or to determine the chance of two people passing on mutant alleles to their offspring. An ASO is an oligonucleotide of 15 to 20 nucleotides long, which acts as a probe to detect a specific DNA sequence. These probes can detect a difference of as little as one base in the target sequence. To detect the probe after it's been bound to the target sequence, a radioactive, enzymatic or fluorescent label must be added to the probe. Dot blotting is the transferring of DNA samples onto a nitrocellulose membrane. The idea of dot blotting is very similar to western blotting, with the advantages of it being simpler, faster and cheaper. How does it work? DNA samples are obtained. PCI is then used to amplify the specific alleles. Two oligoprobes with labels are synthesized, one complementary to the normal or wild type sequence, and one complementary to the sequence with the known mutation. The amplified DNA sample is transferred onto two nitrocellulose membranes. This is done by denaturing the DNA with sodium hydroxide, neutralizing with dilute acid, and fixed to the membrane by baking or ultraviolet crosslinking. After this, the probes are added to the membranes, the wild-type probe to one membrane and the mutant probe to another. All the unbound probes are then washed away. The detection method depends on what kind of label is used on the probes. Interpreting results. Let's say we've taken DNA samples from three patients. In the sample of patient 1, only the wild-type probe is bound to the DNA meaning that patient 1 is homozygous for the normal allele. In the sample taken from patient 2, only the mutant probe has bound to the DNA, meaning that patient 2 is homozygous for the mutant allele. The sample of patient 3 is given a fluorescent signal on both membranes, meaning that patient 3 is heterozygous and has both alleles. Controls. For this method, four different controls are used. Apart from the patient samples, there are also two samples of which one is known to be homozygous for the normal allele, and one is known to be homozygous for the mutant allele. The first control is done by adding the wild-type probe to the homozygous normal allele sample, and the mutant probe to the homozygous mutant allele sample. The second control is done by adding the wild-type probes to both samples. The third control is done by adding mutant probes to both samples. These controls are used to check whether or not the probes can bind to the DNA. The last control is the negative control, to which both probes are added and contain no sample DNA. This control is used to check any contaminants. 